Hi, one of the biggest questions that I get from veterinarians is in extraction sites, should we be using bone grafts? So take a look at the short segment and let me know what you think. This is a case that's in canine dentistry. I know you guys are familiar with this that have, have seen that presentation recently. This is an older case that we did, but it's a good example of, of bone grafting and a very common area that we do bone grafting. <laughs> Back between that first molar and second molar right in that space where we've got the capacity to accumulate plaque on those occlusal surfaces much more readily than we do in other areas of the teeth which have conical occlusal or conical uh, surfaces that are uh, non-occlusal. So looking at that radiographically you've got that defect back there adjacent to the the distal aspect of the distal root on that first molar which is a significant area uh, you've also certainly got the um, bone changes on that second molar the second molar is dispensable so <clears throat> we would definitely want to extract that because that's part of the reason why that defects there obviously and it's not a highly functional tooth so extracting that certainly eliminates the potential for that lesion to occur again. If we leave it, then it's very likely going to occur again, so we want to get that out of there. Even if it's a minor defect, I mean, this one's got some major things going on. You get, see the increased period on ligament space around that distal root. You've got uh, probably a periapical lesion on the mesial root, so we'd want to get rid of that. And again, even if it's not that bad, we want to extract that. And that also accomplishes exposing that area better so we can see down in there and clean that defect uh, much more readily. So extracting that and using your periodontal curette to get down into that bone and <clears throat> look at that, um, you can see that marginal bone level there, and then you can see it there superimposed over the root. And then you can see down uh, into and apical to that marginal bone where we, we need to clean. So we've just extracted that tooth. We've extended that flap rostral so that we can expose all that around that root. And so we'll clean all that all the way around, make sure that there's no granulation tissue down in there using our curettes. And another thing that I use that I don't know a lot of you uh, realize or that we've talked about before, but another thing that we use is a fine cylindrical diamond burr. If we've got enough room, which we would in this case, around that defect where we can get that cylindrical burr in without damaging the tooth, we'll take that cylindrical burr down in there and eliminate the, the uh, fine granulation tissue that exists after we use our curette. So we go down in there with our uh, curette and do the best we can and do that quickly and do that without really worrying too much about hemostasis and then once we're at that point and it's it's more difficult to get the the little segments out then we'll take a cylindrical diamond which is um, a little wider than your cross-cut tapered fissure burr that you use your 701L a little wider in width and it's also a little bit tapered to the tip, not much, uh, but there's a slight taper from the base to the tip, and we use that in there, and that'll help considerably uh, to get you to the point where you've really got that cleaned out really well. And then once that's done, you can use 17% EDTA solution to get out the dentin mud, if you will, all the little dentin shavings, that occur when we clean that because we're scraping the dentin and when we scrape the dentin we're scraping that material down into those tubules so EDTA is a <clears throat> inorganic solvent so it will remove those little particles by dissolution that are in the tubules and we put that in there for four minutes and then we rinse that out and once we've done that then we can go in and put our bone graft in after we've flushed that and, and dried that area. 
So uh, with, with doing that process, we're going to have hemorrhage in that area. So we just mix, literally just mix our bone graft with the hemorrhage there and form the graft with the, with the blood. And this is console. So that's one of our choices that we have for bone graft material. Obviously, a blood clot is a choice too. In this case, because we're wanting to maximize alveolar bone height, we want to get that bone height back up to the, the area where the marginal bone is now. We would want to use a bone graft versus a blood clot because as you may remember, in a, in a year's time, one to two millimeters of that marginal bone height will be compromised when we use just a blood clot. So in extraction sites, when there's no adjacent tooth, that's fine. But when we, we're working on a tooth like the one we just showed you, we want to make sure that we maximize that bone height and not lose that one to two millimeters. And so that's why we'd use a bone graft. Console is an osteo in, uh, or an osteoconductive graft. It just forms a matrix for the osteoblast to attach to, increases the surface area there for those to attach. And so there is no, there are no components in there that cause the bone to grow, as opposed to uh, another graph that I'll show you in a minute, which is osteoinductive that does have components that'll help the bone to grow. So that is uh, before, and then that's after. And if you guys remember this case, this was a spitz that was in my general practice, maybe, I don't know, 20 years ago. And we were able to follow this guy out for seven more years until uh, she was euthanized for seizures and we'd get her back every six months. And this is uh, what, what it looked like. We certainly want to follow the periapical area to make sure that we didn't have any endodontic disease. It just wasn't showing up radiographically yet. So every time we get this patient back for eh, at least a year or two, we're going to pay, pay more attention to that to make sure that there's no changes there that would suggest a problem. And uh, this guy obviously did fine for, uh, for that period of time. So opinions vary in veterinary dentistry on this topic. We'd love to hear your thoughts. So please leave a comment below.